The Mercedes EQ range is growing rapidly. It feels like only yesterday that we were saying hello to our first EQCs that were arriving in the UK, but that was almost two years ago now. As part of a huge push towards electrification, we'll have at least 10 fully electric EQ models on the roads by 2022. So today, we're gonna to say hello to the newest member of the family, the entry point to the EQ range, the brand new EQA. The new model looks familiar, doesn't it? You can tell it's a Mercedes, but you know that there's something different going on here. All Mercedes EQ models get their own bespoke styling features to separate them from the rest of the range, much like a Mercedes AMG model would. A hallmark of the new range is the black panel radiator grille, and on the AMG line, the car gets two chrome strokes. Perhaps the biggest difference, though, is what's under the bonnet, so let's take a look. Here is the front-mounted electric motor, which delivers 190 horsepower and 375 newton meters of torque instantly to the front wheels. The car has been designed with aerodynamics in mind. This is one of the most important things about designing an electric car. The less energy it has to use cutting through the air, the more energy it can use on taking you further down the road. Every aspect of the car, from the sculpted body panels to the diffuser at the rear, even the wheels on all four corners have been aerodynamically optimized to help improve performance and range. This philosophy of maximum aerodynamic efficiency continues underneath the car. Let's take a look. This is a view that I'll never get tired of. Above me is the car's 66.5 kilowatt hour capacity battery encased in its metal protective shell. The battery itself actually makes up a key structural component of the car's chassis. The floor of the EQA is almost completely flat, which helps to boost the car's aerodynamic properties. And there are loads of guiding vanes running from front to rear to clean up the airflow. Pretty similar to what you would see if you look at the floor or the diffuser of a racing car. Back on the ground, I think it's a good looking car. I think it sits really well. It's a strong and dynamic design, especially in AMG line. Of course, form has to go along with function. Popping open the electrically operated tailgate reveals a deep and wide boot with underfloor storage space available to store your charging cables. Finishing off the styling, a feature I love, light bars. The EQA has one running the full width of the nose, and there's another light bar at the back. I'm a big fan of light bars, soft closing doors, and pop-out door handles, so if any car has any one of those features, it's automatically a winner for me. Moving into the interior of the EQA, and it is a familiar place to be, not just because it runs MBUX, but the cabin layout is pretty similar to that of the GLA, which this car is based on. And to me, that's no bad thing. I think it's a great interior. The EQA runs MBUX on the twin 10.25 inch displays, which you have in front of you. These are nice and bright, crisp and clear. They're not washed out by direct sunlight too much in my experience. The EQA, of course, gets an EQ-specific version of MBUX, which allows you to search for charging stations near your current location, along your route, or near your destination. Now, don't worry if your destination is further away than your range. The car will take care of programming in charging stations for you. So, if you do want to visit Northwest Wales and go to the town of Llanfairfyll, Gwynedd, Gogerig, Gwynedd, and Cecilia, or Gogogog, then the EQA will program in the quickest charging stops that it can on your route. It will also make sure that you arrive at each intermediate destination with at least 10% charge remaining. The rear of the EQA's cabin is also a nice place to be, with a comfortable and supportive bench, a fold-down centre armrest which doubles up as a double cup holder too. Plenty of light is able to flood in thanks to the big glass surfaces and the panoramic roof up above as well. And there are just storage bins absolutely everywhere. Down in the centre, just underneath the twin vents for the rear occupants, is also a USB-C charging port. Some of the most common and important questions about electric cars are to do with charging. So let's find somewhere to plug in and run you through the different charging options for this model. Admittedly, we've not had to go very far where we started the video is about 200 meters that way. Now, there are two ways that you can charge the EQA. One is using alternating current or AC. The other is using direct current or DC. Now, AC chargers are by far the most common across the UK at the moment. On a wall box like this, which you'll be able to find at, say, your office or at home, then this can charge the EQA from 10 to 100% in seven hours. 
The EQA is able to charge on AC outlets at a rate of up to 11 kilowatts, and you'll find these higher powered AC chargers on the public network. Most public AC chargers tend to be anywhere between 11 and 22 kilowatts in power output. Charging an EQA on a 11 kilowatt AC source will reduce the charging time from 7 hours down to 5 hours and 45 minutes for a 10 to 100% charge. Personally, I tend not to worry too much anymore about how long an EV will take to recharge because, for one, most of the routes that I do are well within the range of an EV, and secondly, I know that if I do run the car down to 5 or 10%, plugging it into a wall box overnight will have it fully charged by the time I need it in the morning. And anyway, when do we actually wait until our other battery powered devices are pretty much entirely flat before plugging them in. We don't. We put our phones, laptops, tablets, anything on charge uh, anywhere between 20 to 70%, don't we? The car next to us is the EQC, the first member of the Mercedes EQ family. This is our camera car for this video, and if you'd like to find out more about this car, take a look at the video which is on screen now. While AC charging makes up the bulk of the UK's charging network, there is another way. Direct current or DC rapid charging is fast becoming the way to quickly top up your batteries if you're on a longer route. Direct current allows for much more energy to be deposited into the battery in a short space of time. This is due to the higher rate at which the energy is delivered. The EQA is able to rapid charge on a DC outlet at a rate of up to 100 kilowatts, and this means that the car can recharge from 10 to 80% in just 30 minutes. So what can you do in 30 minutes? Well, we're at GridServe just outside of Braintree, which is the world's first dedicated electric vehicle forecourt. And in the next half hour, we could watch some planes as we're not that far away from Stansted Airport, flick through the brochure and argue with my colleagues about which color we'd like to see our next EQA in. Or we can take a look at the really clever energy management solution that they've come up with here. At the moment, the EQA is receiving 100% renewable energy from GridServe solar farms, which are a few miles over that way, and from the bifacial solar panels that make up the canopy. What this means is that there are solar panels facing the sky, but also facing the ground. Now, you might think it's a bit weird to have solar panels facing the ground, but these actually pick up the light, which gets reflected back up off the ground. When it was snowing a couple of months ago, the solar panels facing the ground were actually making much more energy than those that were facing the sky. Now, whilst I'm waiting, I could also choose to go inside and use one of the exercise bikes, which is hooked up to a generator to help power the facility, but I am very much allergic to exercising in public, so you're not gonna see that happening. Now that the batteries are topped up, let's get behind the wheel and see what it's like on the road. In the time between the EQA's launch and us getting our first one, I was wondering how much of the magic that went into the way that the EQC drives would make its way down into our newest, most compact EQ family member? And the answer is a lot. And that is a very, very good thing. A fully charged EQA can take you up to 263 miles. This depends, of course, on specification and how you drive it. If you drive the car like the fastest car I've ever driven, which was a rental car in Spain, then you may see a dip in your projected range. The car is always automatically calculating your projected range based on your energy consumption, so it will try and give you the most realistic projected range possible. Driving an electric vehicle takes a little bit of getting used to. The basics of it, stop, go, steer, are exactly the same. but. Where it gets different is in how you're able to configure the car's regeneration modes. You can have the right regen setting for wherever it is that you're driving. You can change the regen settings using the paddles on the steering wheel. Hitting the minus paddle increases the regeneration and the plus paddle reduces it. The regeneration modes go from D+, which is no automatic regeneration. The car will glide when you lift off and if you apply the brakes yourself. And then going through D, D minus, and D minus minus is the strongest levels of regeneration. The regeneration setting that I tend to use all the time is D auto. This for me feels the most natural. It starts to use the car's radars, sensors, navigation map, as well as the camera that detects speed limits to automatically apply the right amount of regeneration. 
It can react to things that I'm coming up towards on the roads, like the roundabout, which is half a mile ahead of me, as well as applying regeneration to bring me down to the speed of the car in front and also to maintain a safe distance as well. In my experience, it gets the timing pretty much bang on. It starts to slow down the car as I would when driving my own. The driving experience of the EQA is, well, as you would expect from a electric car, virtually silent. There's only a little bit of noise that comes from the electric motor under acceleration, but I do quite like this. And to be honest, it drives like a Mercedes. The ride soaks up the bumps with ease. It's very comfortable and very quiet at motorway speeds. This is definitely a place where you could spend a few hours covering long distances between cities. But it's driving around town that the EQA starts to come into its own, really. This is where electric motors, to me, make a lot more sense than a combustion engine at low speeds, because electric motors are much more efficient than a combustion engine, but because the nature of stop-start driving in town means that there's a lot of regeneration to do and a lot of energy that can be harvested and put back into the battery for you. The instant response from the electric motor means that the car is a force to be reckoned with away from the light. <laughs> it's addictive. The turning circle is nice and small as well. I don't think there are many tight spaces that you'll struggle to get in and out of in an EQA. The steering is light at low speeds as well. Again, helps to make manoeuvring really easy. Driving this car around town, to be honest, is a doddle. The high seating position, big glass surfaces all around us, big mirrors, which include blind spot assist, are very handy as well, especially if people decide to make their own lane between you and another car. Blind spot assist also comes with a exit warning function. It will stay on once the car has been switched off. If it detects something as you go to open the door, it will warn you on either side. I think that's enough town driving. Let's take it out of town and see what the chassis underneath us has to offer. Believe me, you don't need to retake your driving test in order to drive an electric car, but there's a different way, there's a slightly different art form to driving one of these spiritedly, let's say. Because the battery is mounted low down in the floor, it gives you a great centre of gravity, but you've got to guide the car into corners rather than throwing it in. You can get into a really good flow with the car. Plus, this is where the regeneration helps you out. As soon as you lift off, it'll start harvesting energy, it'll keep you at the right speed. Corners nice and flat, really stable. Hard to unsettle this car. The intelligent technology of the EQA isn't just limited to the cabin, it extends out to the Mercedes Me Connect app, which allows you to keep an eye on your EQA at all times. You can monitor the battery, start the pre-entry climate control so the cabin is just right for when you hop in, as well as making sure that the doors and windows are locked. If the car needs any attention as well, it will let you know through the app. You're also able to program in your routes. This makes route planning easy, and like we said earlier, if your route is longer than your range, the car will program in charging stops along the way. All Mercedes Me Connect services are included for three years from when you register the car to Mercedes Me. Perhaps the most important question is, how would you have your EQA? The model is available in two trim levels, Sport and AMG line, and I know I said at the start of the video that this is the entry point into the Mercedes EQ family, but that doesn't mean that the specification is entry level. I think it's a great standard equipment offering. If you'd like to add some more features, then you can pick and choose between the Premium and Premium Plus package, which you can add to AMG line. For full details of pricing and specification, as well as technical data, take a look at the brochure which we've put in the description. The way in which we get around is changing, and we can't escape the fact that the dawn of the age of the electric vehicle is well and truly upon us. Now, I know electric cars have been on sale for quite a while now, but they're nowhere near as rare a sight on our roads as they were even five years ago. As a car which is great on the motorway, planted and entertaining to throw along B-roads, the most important part of a road test for me, but also an enjoyable thing to drive around town where it feels at home. I'm finding the EQA is making a very, very strong case for itself. At no point during the test did I think that it was lacking anything by not having an engine under the bonnet and a fuel tank under the floor. If anything, especially around town, I think it benefited from having an electric motor being able to run much more efficiently at town speeds. 
The EQA itself is wading into a fast growing part of the EV market, be that for compact crossovers like the EQA is itself or hatchbacks. There is some great product from our competition. I've been very lucky enough to get behind the wheel and sample some of those. But in this part of the market, there's only one Mercedes. I think the EQA has a lot more to give. I think it has a lot more to offer. I think we need to see what the car is like to live with. Make sure to stick around to see what it's like. Thank you for watching this video. I do hope you've enjoyed it. For more information on the rest of the passenger car range, take a look at the videos which are on screen now. Make sure to subscribe to our channel too, so you don't miss a thing.